What about tie lines? It's a horizontal line giving composition of the vapor and liquid for a given composition. And the lever rule is related to tie lines. Bubble point, dew point. And we'll uh, reproduce this. So we go this way. Straight line. That's your, for ideal situation, that's your bubble point line. And down here is your dew point line. This is total pressure. And this is composition of some particular kind. So suppose you're in here in the two-phase region. We'll put Y1 or Z1. That'd be the composition total moles. So suppose you're right here at this particular composition. So that corresponds to a particular value of Z, total moles of component 1, both in the liquid and the vapor. What you do, let me change the color here again. Let's go to, say, uh, what are you, yellow? Yellow. How's yellow? We go across here. So we're right there at that point, that particular composition and pressure. We go across here. If you take this down and drop it down here, this gives you the composition at this particular liquid vapor, the composition in the liquid phase. And if you take this, extrapolate this down, this gives you the composition in the uh, gas phase or the vapor phase. This is called a tie line. And if, for example, you say this is length of there and this is the length here, let's call that L2. So there's a relationship between the length of these lines and these are called tie lines and the an amount, uh, total amount in the uh, vapor phase and in the liquid phase. Now to derive that relationship, uh, let's consider the following. The total number of moles in the system times the mole fraction, the total mole fraction of component one in the solution. We're using the symbol Z for that. That is equal to the number of moles, the total number of moles. This is both components, both component one and two that are in liquid phase times the mole fraction of component one in the liquid phase plus the total moles in the gas phase times the mole fraction in, in the gas phase. That should be a Y, total moles in the gas phase. We can also say that the uh, total number of moles in the system, component one plus two, times the mole fraction of one, so this will give you the number of, number of moles of component one, that's equal to the total number of moles in the liquid phase times the total mole fraction of component one and uh, plus the number of moles in the gas phase times the total mole fraction of one. So let's equate these two. So the total number of moles in the liquid phase times x1 plus the total number of moles of the gas phase times y1 that's equal to the total number of moles in the liquid phase times Z1 plus the total number of moles in the gas phase times Z1. Uh, we can rearrange this. Let's say the total number of moles in the liquid phase times, say, X1 minus Z1. So we took that one and put it over here. We're going to take this one and put it over there. Take out the number total number of moles in the gas phase. Z1 minus Y1. Right, let's look at these two quantities. Well, this we'll call L1 and this we'll call L2. X1 minus Z1, that X1 minus Z1, by the way, this, we said that we started out with this as Z1, so this is Z1. So X1 minus Z1, and this would be Z1 minus Y1. So these are just L1 and L2. Okay, so we have L1 and L2. So what we end up with is the total number of moles in the liquid phase times L1 is equal to the total number of moles in the gas phase times L2. And this is called the lever rule. Levers or levers, I guess. I'm <laughs> pronouncing like an English person. So if this amount decreases here, then the number of moles has to increase. Uh, just like a lever. So we know uh, something about, uh, go back here, tie lines and the lever rule.
1 and 2, are, this is the end here, corresponds to total uh, moles, the moles of component 1 plus the moles of component 2. So I guess there's a little change in notation that's needed. This is N in the liquid times L1 equals N in the gas phase times L2.